All right, well, this morning is a little different. Um, we're not doing like a traditional sermon. Um, what, we, what we like to do in January is actually next week, we'll be talking about vision, where we believe that God is taking us as a church, what we feel like God is saying for our year, um, and just kind of outlining some of that. We'll actually be talking about that over the next month or so, but um, I would encourage you to be here next week um, as we start that conversation. But before we do that, what we like to do is we like to take a week and just take some time and kind of stop and remember and really look at what God has done in this past year and celebrate and thank him. Um, I'm honestly amazed. I'm amazed. I am amazed at what God has done in this community, you know, and I think sometimes we get so busy that sometimes it's, it's like, oh my gosh, when you actually stop and you look at all the things God is doing, it is astounding. It is astounding what God is doing through this community. So we're going um, to talk through some of those things. We're just going to share some testimonies and stories, and, and I hope it encourages you this morning. Um, my goal is to bore you, not bore you, but overwhelm you so much with the goodness of God that you're like, make it stop, make it stop, 40 minutes from now, okay, when we finish. Um, I can't handle it. It's just too good. So um, I want to start by talking a little bit about some things that have happened in our community this year. Um, first of all, we had 300 people each season around there, uh, in, e in each season participate in life groups. That's pretty amazing. Um, we had 25 groups in the spring and 24 groups in the fall. So much connection and friendship and accountability and strength came out of those life groups. Um, in addition to our normal life groups, I don't know if you know this, but we had three intentional men's groups that ran this year, strengthening and pouring into our men. Um, we have some specific life groups that focus on outreach or ministry. Um, one of them, we had um, prison ministry, which is amazing. Come on, some of y'all are here. Yes. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but our, our prison ministry, you know, goes to two different facilities right now, the Twin Towers County Jail and Federal Prison, both are downtown, um, and our teams are leading Bible studies, they're doing chapel services, the inmates are so hungry and always looking forward to the team coming, it's incredible that the team has the opportunity to, to lead worship, to pray, to prophesy, to give words of knowledge to people, they're singing E58 worship songs in there with all the inmates. God is moving powerfully in the prisons, and there's a team from this church that's there consistently, which is amazing, amazing. Um, they were telling us stories that, that the inmates in, in, in federal are so on fire for God that they're even leading their own Bible studies throughout the week. God is doing incredible things. And so there's plans this year to break, even, break more even into the um, juvenile justice uh, areas, but, but God is doing incredible things. Um, one of our life groups, um, ongoing, goes down to Skid Row. How many, anybody here on the Hope on Skid Row team? Okay, amazing. And these guys are showing up every week, and they're loving on people down in Skid Row. And there's worship experience, and they, you know, they're feeding them and, and ministering to them and loving on them and, and dignifying them and allowing them to help lead worship down there and just creating a really beautiful and powerful community. Um, and this is happening every single week, people down there getting impacted in our city. I love that. Um, we had 18 different home for the holiday meals that happened throughout the city in December. That was incredible. 119 of you this year went through Inside E58, which is kind of our onboarding process into E58. So I know some churches are like, man, what we wouldn't give to have like two new people. We had 119 new people learn about our church, get more connected, get more involved just this year. Incredible. Um, men, 46 of you attended man camp this year. Yeah, you did. I heard so many of you guys say it was your favorite year yet, that it was powerful and God did so many things and really deep connection amongst our men. Apparently you played paintball. Is that what's happening there? Yeah, it is. Okay. Awesome. Ladies, why do one retreat? We did two this year. Yeah, we did. Um, and you guys showed up. 118 of you came to Leap, and 134 of you came to Lavished. And they were both so profound. They were powerful. They were 
Um, great time of connection. Literally just watching, you know, people just find a friend group, like for real, and now they're like hanging out all the time. And people who, who had, you know, got rocked by God. And um, I, some of you guys don't know this, but the team wrote personal prophetic words for every single woman that attended Lavished. And like, People were just like, oh, it's like God's reading my soul. You know, it was like power, just so powerful what happened in those events. Um, honestly, in, in the area of community, there's just so much that happened from people going on God missions together, people going after projects together, justice initiatives, you know, creative projects together. Um, people really showed up for each other this year in this community. I mean, people grieved with each other when it was necessary. People brought meals. People stepped in. People watched each other's kids. People met each other in the hospital. People moved into the same neighborhood just to go after that area together. This community, there's profound things that happened through our community this year, which I'm so grateful for. One of my favorites is this year, 2019, we had three different couples who met at E58 get married. Come on now. Who says you can't find somebody at church? Jeremy and Emma, I love this. Look at these guys, Mark, these guys are right here. How cute. Josh and Carissa, I love this. This is amazing. And so I, I'm so grateful for that. Um, these guys all met within this community and that's pretty incredible. There's hope. Um, <laughs> Y'all get it together. Okay. Um, <laughs> barely, did you say barely? <laughs> we release faith in Jesus' name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, I want to talk about I want to talk about church life for a moment. Some things that we saw God do this year. Okay. This might not seem big, but it is huge. Can we just stop and thank Jesus that we got triple A parking this year? Listen. If you were here. If you've only been here since AAA parking, you don't even know what we're talking about. But we are thankful to God for that parking lot. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I don't know if we should celebrate this or not, but here we go. We consumed 5,631 donuts and whole donuts, whole donuts and 6,240 donut holes. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> it's happening right there. Our sins are being exposed. <laughs> and it's everybody's kids. That's what's happening. There was a whole year, thankfully, thankfully Jesus, or Rua loves Jesus now, but there was a whole year where he said, you know, I only go to church for the donuts. Like he literally told, I'm like, cool, okay. Um, <laughs> pastor kid problems, okay. Thankfully he, he comes for Jesus now. Um, all right, so in addition to donuts, um, we had 10 on-site baptisms this year, and we had the incredible honor of baptizing 54 kids at Tribe this summer. <laughs> It was amazing, amazing. It was so good. Um, we had countless salvations, healings, God encounters, um, and miracles, truly, in our services, in our life groups, in our community. I, there's no way to even quantify all that God did in our times together. Um, I want to just take a moment and really shout out to all of our volunteers because, man, our volunteers, you guys brought it this year. You guys loved people well, served all year, just movers and shakers making it happen here. And honestly, we get feedback all the time from people who visit. They're like, how are your volunteers so kind and wonderful and loving and full of Jesus? And I got a prophetic word. And like, they're just constantly impacted by you, just interacting with you. And so, so grateful for our volunteers and all that um, you guys sowed this year into making this, this place powerful. Um, our team did 105 sozos this year. Those are really intensive inner healing prayer um, times, 105. That's pretty incredible. We had the honor of dedicating 23 children to the Lord this year. 
we had a 5% increase in children um, attending children's ministry and a 15% increase of youth attending our youth program. Five of our youth interned this year for the church and six adults, and it brought so much strength to what we're building here. Incredible. Look at these guys. I love it. Um, our youth attended summer camp this summer and had just an, a powerful and amazing time together. God really impacted them. Um, some of you guys really helped sow into that and make that possible, and it was so fruitful. Um, Kid City, our children's program, uh, started live worship this past year, 2019. So our worship leaders out here take turns. Some are out here and some are in there leading your children in worship. It's powerful. You can probably hear them. Um, it's good. Something that we're, we're excited about is this year we took all of our second through sixth graders um, through a curriculum we wrote called The Jesus Way. And I don't know if you guys were here not this summer, but this last summer, when we did a whole summer series on kingdom culture, we took that whole series and we did a year-long children's curriculum out of it and taught our kids all year about kingdom culture, that Jesus had a culture and let's make that our culture and let's make Jesus' culture stronger than any ethnic culture, national culture, family culture, church culture, make heaven's culture your culture. And so we talked about that with our kids for a year, a year. And um, we've now been able, you know, we're finishing it up and packaging it so that other churches can have it and take their children through that. Powerful. Um, every single week we hear testimonies um, in our children's ministry about what God is doing. Kids hearing God's voice. Kids being healed. Kids having encounters with God. I'm going to just tell you a few things because I think sometimes hearing a little story helps. Um, so here's just a few. Recently after worship... Um, a seven-year-old shared she saw a vision of Jesus while she was singing. He came up to her and told her she was a princess and he loved her a ton. <laughs> then he told her he really wanted her to pay attention to new kids and people that were coming into the class and to be nice to them, to be friends with them, and not to hit them in the face. <laughs> you guys, Jesus is so practical. I mean... Some parent better praise the Lord when Jesus shows up and speaks to your child and tells them, hey, maybe don't hit. You know, you're like, thank you, Jesus, right? This is powerful. I love this. Um, a five-year-old came to one of our leaders to share that they had um, a friend who was being really bossy and controlling and mean at school. Five years old. And that day, the kids were learning that God is good all the time, and that God always has solutions to our problems. And so the teacher uh, back there sat down with the child and just began to, to pray and ask Jesus for a solution to what was going on in their life. Very practical, very real. Five years old, right? And after a pause, a little, the listening, the, you know, the little girl said, well, I didn't really hear anything except um, that I felt like God is showing me that she's being bossy. Um, because she's actually feeling sad. And that she's not actually meaning to be rude, um, but she doesn't know how to feel all of her big feelings. I mean, you needed to hear, I needed to hear Jesus at five, right? This is awesome. And so they had got to have this really powerful conversation about compassion and about, you know, how to really minister to her friend. And, and it changed the whole dynamic because she was able to hear God and get God's heart for a five-year-old little bully at school. I mean, powerful. This is powerful. Um, another thing that was a favorite for a lot of the, the team back there was really, really cool to watch. And you'll hear a little bit more about this uh, at the end, but um, how the kids in our, our, ch our church this year really wrapped around Caleb, who was going through cancer treatments. And um, some of the, the ones that stood out to the team were... Three boys were having a sleepover and decided to start praying for Caleb as they were going to bed. And um, as they prayed, they saw a light come into the room, and they all freaked out. They all experienced and saw angels come into the room and were so impacted that they were talking about it for days. Another boy had a specific dream of Caleb getting healed by Jesus. He saw Jesus pouring oil, wine, and bread into the place where he was going to have surgery. Um, the whole 8- to 12-year-old class uh, spent lots of time praying and making cards for Caleb to fill his hospital. Um, 
several, several of our children actually had prophetic dreams and different things um, throughout the last couple of months where they were watching God heal Caleb. Profound things happening just with our own children. Um, I love this, this story. They are saying there's been a lot of just, uh, even with our babies and our little kids, um, we go after it. And we, you know, speak over them, we prophesy over them, we speak life over them. You know, we believe that just because your body's little doesn't mean your spirit has to be little, right? And so you just, we're speaking truth over these kids. And I know in the, in the baby class, the toddler class, they've been talking for a whole month about the fact that God um, protects you and he's with you when you're scared. And a two-year-old, two years old, a tiny, tiny person, a two-year-old, um, was going to get his first haircut, and he was totally afraid. And on his way to get his first haircut, he tells his parents, I'm afraid, but I know I'm okay because Jesus is going to protect me. The fact that this two-year-old had ab absorbed what he'd literally been hearing in class for a month, come on, that is so good, so good. So just story after story like this of kids feeling you know, wow, I was praying and God came and lifted this heavy weight off of me or this thing changed in me. And it's just been really beautiful to watch what God's doing in our kids and our youth. Um, I'm talking about our events for a moment. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Spencer Dahlgren, who's amazing, joined our team this year as our new director of events. And she's just been killing it, doing a phenomenal job, bringing a lot of strength. And both Salt and Tribe were so powerful this last year. Um... I am still chewing on and moved by the message that Miles McPherson brought us about racial bias. And I think people get so caught up on racism and they think, well, I'm not racist, but they don't under, he brought such good language and health to understand, but here's how racial, racial bias works and helping everybody realize we all have bias and how do you work through that and so profound and so powerful. Um, Loved our conversations with um, Cy Rogers around sexuality and identity. Just, it was so powerful and so good. Um, there was so much that I was so moved by. I mean, just alone in, or Devon Franklin, you guys remember that conversation where he talked to us, all, just giving this tools of, here's what I have learned in this journey as a person of faith going after the entertainment industry. It was profound it was so good. And then, of course, we all got absolutely and utterly schooled by April Tan, who taught us about radical generosity that was like, are we even saved? I mean, that's literally, I was like, what am I doing with my life? Um, so incredible. And so um, just thinking about the deposit that was made in this community through SALT last year was huge. Um, and then, of course, Tribe. Tribe was amazing. Tribe was so incredible. And just watching what God did in our kids, um, the stories of so many kids saying, I saw my first miracle at Tribe. I heard God's voice for the first time in my life. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I got baptized. Just having kids getting rocked by the power of God. Like the reality of who God is. You know, I, I know even for my, my nine-year-old, Rua, um, he went to a new school this year. And didn't know anybody. And, you know, first couple of days of school, it's kind of like, oh, I don't know anybody. And uh, one of the assignments the teacher had them do was take a little Ziploc bag, fill it with things that are meaningful to you, and present it to the class. And this other boy that Rua doesn't know who he is in Rua's class gets up, and he opens up his Ziploc bag, and he's pulling things out. And he pulls out a bracelet from Tribe. This kid had been to Tribe. And he's telling all of Rua's class. Now, Rua's sitting there going... What? This kid is telling all of Rua's class about this epic thing he goes to every summer, and it's so crazy, and God is there, and crazy miracles happen, and it was so incredible. That's why he brought his bracelet to tell the whole class, and there's this kid in Rua's class going on and on about how impacted he was at Tribe, you know? So cool. And got to talk to the, to the mom after, and she said, um, she says, you know, my kids have been in church their whole life. She was, but I don't know what, what happens here. She was, but literally my son walked out and said, I just never knew God was that powerful. And it was like the realization of how powerful God was had, had hit him at tribe. And it was, it was incredible. Not just kids, parents crying, parents getting rocked. God just did so much in our events this year. And I'm, I'm so grateful. 
um, we have really exciting news coming in the next couple weeks about, about tribe, so stay tuned. But parents, because I know your calendar looks like mine, just go ahead and save July 16th through 18th. This, this, do not plan anything. Trust me. You'll be glad you didn't. Um, all right. I want to talk about our worship and media uh, department this year. You guys, we recorded our very first album, and it was amazing of all original songs. <clears throat> Make Way debuted at number 29 on the billboards and went number uh, three on iTunes under the Christian genre. It's amazing. The album played in 71 countries and over 138,000 streams. In addition, we arranged, filmed, and recorded three Christmas songs this year. We added 10 new members to our worship team. Um, we had powerful encounter nights every month where God showed up profoundly um, with us. Huge win. We brought on Jeremy. Where's Jeremy Kong? Is he in here? Jeremy this year, you guys, heading up our tech. Our tech department, he just brought, has brought so much strength, such a win for this, for this church. We're so incredibly grateful for you, Jeremy. Um, and the team is continuing to write, produce, and cultivate more original worship uh, with a heart to really represent what God is doing in this church and in this city. And so we're so grateful for that. Um, in terms of media, we had over 417,000 views on YouTube, which is just crazy to me. Because we're not really trying to like build some, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those things where you realize like we see what happens in the room, but we don't realize that tens of thousands of people are watching what's happening here every Sunday. That all over the world, people are tuning in, people are watching, people are being inspired, people, people are, are being provoked. I think it's pretty incredible. Um, we doubled our, sub our subscribers on our YouTube channel. Um, Across all of our social media platforms, we had huge increases this year. Something I think is really interesting is of all of our social media platforms, 37% of who follows us is from LA. Everybody else is from around the world. So our, this little church has an impact that's even bigger than just this region. Only 37% of who's following us is even from this region. And so knowing that so, much, so many people all over are being so... Um, inspired and provoked, and those of you watching online, um, we're so grateful for just this global community God is building of people who are hungry, and so really, really thankful for that. Another huge win, of course, Tiffany. Where is Tiffany? Is she in here? <laughs> Tiffany's in, some, in the office. Tiffany joined the team this year as our marketing and, and uh, communications director, and she's just done a phenomenal job. Give her some love when you see her. Um, all right, let's talk about finances for a moment. Something I am so incredibly grateful for is that everybody's all in here. That this is a church where people are just so committed. We believe we are the church. We're not just watching other people do church. We are the church and we're all invested. And you guys have been so insanely generous this year. Um, our general tithes and offerings experienced an 18% increase this past year. Huge. We continue to be totally debt free as an organization. We have steadily continued to grow a healthy savings and save up for our building in Jesus' name, which is going to come in our spike here. And um, I love this. We have given $115,000 this year towards justice initiatives. It's amazing. Such a generous community. Um, I do want to talk about our, our justice initiatives a little bit because I am just so continually amazed at what this little community is able to do. And we are deeply committed to justice. And if you're kind of newer to us as a church, um, we believe, you know, when you look at scripture, scripture has a lot to say about justice. And um, I know there's a lot of like maybe competing theories outside of scripture, but just some people would say, oh, social justice is good. Social justice is bad. What does that mean to you? There's a lot of different definitions. But we really rally around the biblical definition of justice. Um, in the Bible, the word mishpat, which is the Hebrew word for justice, is used over and over and over in scripture. And God is passionate about justice. Isaiah tells us God loves justice. God loves mishpat. But what is mishpat? Biblically, scripturally, when you look at everywhere where mishpat is talked about, justice is really about 
um, the restoration of every violation of love. Anywhere where God's original intention has been broken, justice comes in and makes it right. It heals, it restores, it rights the wrongs. It's all about God's order, God's government, God's dreams being put back into place anywhere where love has been violated. So that's what it is scripturally, and we are committed to doing that as a community. We're committed to seeing um, wrongs righted. We are committed to seeing heaven come and bring restoration where things are out of order, okay? And so um, what I love is that you guys have shown up. You guys have shown up this year in this area and so passionately gone after um, the hard places, the dark places, uh, the complex places, because if you, if you know justice, you understand that justice work, it's hard and it's holy work. And it's complex and it's messy. And sometimes it's slow going. But let me tell you, it is so vital. And it is so, so, so rewarding. And it is so necessary. And so we are so grateful for a community that has stuck it out for the long haul. Amen? So a couple things I wanted just to highlight to you. One, in the area of foster care. Um, this year, we trained 82 aunties and uncles to wrap around foster families. We have seven teams of aunties and uncles serving families. We have two families, um, two new families who became licensed foster parents this year, and a third who's waiting on their final stamp of approval. Um, yeah. Over the last three months, we've helped six other churches in the region strategize how to start their own programs, which is huge. We're not interested in just doing our own thing. We're interested in mobilizing the body of Christ across the city. Um, we're now partnering with Olive Crest to consult churches in the region about how they also can get involved, which is huge. Um, benevolence. We don't usually talk about this, um, but I think it's good for you to know what's happening. Um, in the area of benevolence, we've been coming alongside and supporting individuals in our own church, primarily single moms, um, with some resources, basic household needs, support, training, things like that. Um, this year, we took on the challenge of assisting one specific single mom to fully transition from being in a shelter to having her own living situation and transportation and being totally set up, which is huge. We were also uh, able to assist a family in our community who um, was battling a, a huge health issue um, by paying for some of their living expenses. Um, we also put in place some resources to help people that attend our Sunday services who were in need of food or housing. And so we were able to put some of those things in place, which is huge for this community. Um, and I want to tell you a couple highlights of just some of the things that are happening. Are you guys getting tired of hearing what God's doing yet? No. Okay. Um, my, my goal is to wear out your hands or something. I don't know. I, I want you to... I want you to truly hear all these things, because this is honestly just a fraction. This is just a fraction. Like, every one of you could probably sit here and tell stories of what you saw God do this year in your family, in your business, right, in your community. And so we're just, we're just so grateful. Um, but I want to highlight some of the things that we're doing in the areas of justice um, in addition to the ones I've talked about. Now, some of you have maybe asked us before, how do we kind of pick what orgs we're working with? So expression, now m many of us in this room are involved in all different kinds of organizations which are powerful and incredible. And we do support those and we get behind as much as we can. What we have decided as a church is that we're going to, to pick a few key organizations that we feel like we have long-term history and purpose with. And we're going to go really deep with those ones as much as we can. And so those are the ones you see up on the giving wall. Those are the ones that, that you hear about when we're doing justice offerings. These are, these are also orgs that are deeply involved in this community. So, for example, Reach Up, Reach Out, Alex and Shona, part of this community. Treasures over here. Harmony and Chris, these guys. Directing Treasures, a part of this community, right? So we're talking about, we, we select organizations that we have deep relationship with and that we're on a journey with. And so um, I want to just tell you a few things because honestly, this is the part that just blows my mind. That this little community has been able to have the kind of impact we have is mind-blowing. Um, first, I'm going to talk about the Justice Group. The Justice Group cared for, housed, educated, and provided family and love for 12 formerly orphaned children in Kenya this year. It's huge. 
12 orphans found family, home, care, and quality education in Kenya. Um, reach up, reach out with, with Alex and Shana. Um, many of you guys, probably you know, some of you guys joined and, and went with them this summer for the worship and arts camp where 200 kids in Uganda um, got to participate that, in that. Um, plus, they recorded two songs at the worship camp. It was powerful. Reach Up, Reach Out sent and supported two missionaries to Uganda this year, Melody and Zach. Some of you guys were on this team, but Christmas in Africa, where uh, the team was able to serve over 5,000 children in Uganda and Kenya at Christmas. There were countless salvations and just so many incredible things that God did. Um, 212 children were sponsored this year through Reach Up, Reach Out. 115 widows were sponsor sponsored and 44 graduated from the program in July. Incredible what God, God is doing. Just to mention, some of these are like, I was hard to even pick which ones because there are so many. Each one of these orgs has so many things that God is doing. It's like, how do you even communicate it? Um, treasures, Harmony and Chris, can you guys just stand up? Because you're kind of in the corner and they just need to see you. These guys are awesome. Okay. I want you to see their faces. Um, amazing. But if you're not familiar with, with Treasures, um, Treasures just does phenomenal work, um, reaching out to supporting, investing in, and providing opportunities for women who are coming out of sexual exploitation. So they do a whole range of things from outreach and mentoring and support groups and um, wraparound services, all kinds of stuff. Um, but some highlights of what happened this year with Treasures they were able to help a handful of women either get into a shelter, transition into residential facilities or safe apartments, or relocate away from abusive pimps. That's pretty incredible. They were able to bless two women with great reliable car cars to get to their new jobs, which is awesome. They supported three women in new entrepreneurial ventures. They advocated for a woman to be released from prison for wrongful charges. And they walked alongside so many women in their everyday life from just, you know, baby showers and all the things. They just walked alongside these women. It was powerful. Um, they had huge, one of my favorite, I love this, just so much favor this year, um, really on your voice, Harmony. And God just highlighting their story and their voice um, at a level that's just unprecedented, pretty powerful. Um, Harmony was invited to speak at the National Center to End Sexual Exploitation Conference in Washington, D.C. Come on. BuzzFeed reposted their video, and it's now had over 9.9 .9 million views. Come on. NPR did a story on Harmony and the work of Treasures. Harmony had the incredible opportunity to speak at the Strikeout Slavery event um, in Kansas City, uh, the baseball game with the Royals versus the New York Mets, which reached over two million people. Come on. In news coverage, you got to do that with the amazing Lauren Hill. I was jealous. Um, also featured at the Anaheim uh, Angels Stadium. So just the fact that God is, is taking people from this community and putting them in position to be able to speak at a national level, calling the nation to do something, to be a part of, of standing against trafficking, to, to really bring solutions. This is profound, profound, huge. These guys reached over 2,000 women this year through their strategic gift bag outreach that they do in strip clubs in LA. They visit every single strip club in LA and reach out to the women. And it's, they've been doing this for 15, 18? 18 ish years. And I mean, talk about huge impact, huge impact that they're having. Incredible. So proud of you guys. Um, Justice Rising. Justice Rising is another one of our, our core organizations. Um, Cassandra and Edison, who met here at Expression uh, years ago, and uh, obviously more than thought each other was cute. Now they're married and doing incredible justice work together around the world. Um, they just left for, or they leave for Congo, uh, back to Congo tomorrow. They were home for the holidays. But um, our team has built four new schools just this year in war-torn Congo. 
if you're not if you're not familiar with the work of Justice Rising, um, it's the concept is to go into the most brutal war zones in the world and disrupt cycles of violence through education. And so we are building schools in the places no other NGO will go, in the places everybody, like the red zone of the red zone of the red zone that nobody else is going, and we're building schools, and it's literally shifting communities. It's powerful. Um, they educated 2,200 students every day last year and employed over 100 teachers and staff. 120 teachers and staff. That's a lot. Might not sound a lot, but can you imagine if you had to believe God for 120 people's salary? It's impressive. They reached 14 schools that Justice Rising owns and operates in Eastern Congo. Um, Justice Rising supported youth this last year in Syria to attend university. This is one of my favorite things. Our schools, you guys, had amazing uh, reports and, and results. 100% of our students passed the National Secondary School Exit Exam. If you don't know how education in the developing world works, this is a miracle of miracles. 100% of our students passed secondary school exams. That's incredible. And 98% of our students passed the National Primary School Exit Exams. Another thing I love, our schools have complete gender, uh, gender parity with 50.1% of the student population being girls. In the, you know, in a third world nation, this is unheard of. This is unheard of. Girls are the last to ever go to school, and we make sure all of our schools that at least 50% are girls. It's awesome. Um, Justice Rising held their third annual teacher training conference that brought in staff from some of the worst war-torn regions in the country to rest, pray, build culture, and train on teaching methods and best practices. Um, they also saw multiple hearts touched and encouraged as the staff learned to hear God's voice, as the staff encountered the God of peace for themselves. Um, we saw over 20 child soldiers go through our leadership league and be educated, mentored, and get basic counseling this year. Jesus is moving in war-torn regions. This is something they said. And we're ready, or we're getting ready for the next three school building sites set to begin construction in early 2020. I love it. I also love that this year you guys really rallied um, when we came one Sunday morning with the report that our uh, national director, our base, had been robbed at gunpoint. And you guys rallied, and we were able to, on the spot, do an offering and send $17,000 to replace computers and medical bills. You guys really showed up this year to stand with them. And uh, last but not least, uh, Casimir Sueños which is our work that we're doing in Ecuador. Um, that base is actually run by, you're not Hona, you look like Hona, where's Hona? He's gone, Hona Sisters. Um, base there is run by Hona Sisters, but actually was really birthed out of a group from Expression 15 years ago as we were beginning, like just going down and beginning to, to do outreach and ministry and um, and so I know a lot of you there have been on missions trip with us to Ecuador. You've, some of you have lived there, have invested there. Um, and so this is a, something that's very, very near to our heart. And the work we're doing there is with victims of sexual exploitation, um, as well as working with incarcerated youth. And so just a couple highlights from there. This year, they trained dozens of new volunteers, pastors from 20 different churches, and key top government officials. They poured into directors of other anti-trafficking organizations in the nation, and they launched a campaign to promote awareness and prevention of prostitution in one of the most influential universities in the whole nation. Um, after 15 years of faithfully serving every week the most vulnerable in the red light district in Quito, the government has officially asked Casami Sueños to officially oversee, this is powerful, and represent the most vulnerable. So now they've actually given a seat at the table in the government to our staff to represent and be the voice of the most vulnerable in the region. And it has provided profound opportunities to advocate, to shift things. In fact, they've already changed the name of the region to, to be called, it has you know, a different name before, to be called the, the, the zone of peace. They're just like, we're gonna just call it the peace zone. Like, just incredible things that are happening um, there. Um, Casabi Sueños launched a new weekly inner healing support group called Brave Ones, and this year, 12 women exiting prostitution were a part of that inner healing program. It's incredible. 
The team provided Christmas dinner and Christmas gifts to 230 exploited women, incarcerated youth, and vulnerable children. They made a lot of turkeys. They were like, we don't want to see turkeys ever again. Um, something else I love, a well-known uh, chocolate company has linked now with Casa Mis Sueños and is now placing anti-trafficking um, awareness information and intervention information on their packaging due to their partnership with Casa Mis Sueños. Incredible. So this is literally just a fraction. Isn't this incredible what God has done this year? And you know, I, I look at this and I think, oh my gosh, God is so crazy and so good. And he is. But you know what? God partners with people. And you guys showed up. You guys showed up this year. I love that about this community. You guys were available. You guys had faith. You guys gave. You guys, you guys invested. And because you guys have done that, it's just profound what God has done. I think this is just our set, our set year. This was just 2019. What are going to be our stories a year from now? I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I'm going to just say this. I'm, I'm going to have Alex come up in a second, and I, I'm going I'm to have Alex share a testimony as we wrap up, because truly, I think for me personally, my, my favorite thing I've watched God do this year is the healing that Caleb is experiencing, the miracle. And so I'm going to have him share that story. Um, you know, I think sometimes the church gets a bad rap. But I, I look at you guys, and I look what God is doing in our lives and in our community, and I just think, my goodness, the church of Jesus is alive. The church is alive. The kingdom of God is advancing. Things are happening. Things are shake, you know, shifting. And I'm so incredibly grateful to be a part of a community that is so all in for going for the kingdom. And so truly, I, I'm, I'm so thankful for each one of you guys. Um, Alex, why don't you come on up here? I want you guys to hear this story. Some of you guys know bits and pieces, but I, I want you to hear what God is doing in our midst. And we can have the worship team come back up as well, because we're going we're gonna to go into some worship at the end. Thank you, Jen. Watch your step. There's a price to be paid to those fly shoes. <laughs> God is so good. He is so faithful. Stay with me. Stay with us just a few minutes. I want to encourage us. Um, I want to share what God has done in our lives, through us, through every single one of us. Uh, I want to thank you for being our us. You know who you are. I know who you are. And most importantly, God knows who you are. Before I share, I, I do want to take, I think we want to take a moment to thank our pastors for leading the way. And all that we've talked about. Can we thank God for them right now? Truly, we would not be doing what we're doing as a church without your faith, without your obedience, and without you entrusting us to be all that God has called us to be. So we thank God for you, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. So I want to talk to you about... Uh, I want to share our testimony with you, and it has to do with my little boy, Caleb. Caleb is a, an amazing young boy uh, who, there, there's a picture of Caleb. That was uh, Caleb a year ago. He has the biggest smile. Uh, one thing about Caleb is that he speaks the language of heaven. Uh, he knows how to be grateful at all times in all things. Uh, I'm not one who ascribes to using the words never or always, but I can tell you that Caleb never complains about anything. And I can also tell you that he always thanks God for everything. It doesn't matter what he's experiencing. He can be in the hospital getting chemo as he has been for the past nine months, and he can be grateful in that moment. He can also be grateful when he's at Popeye's with me eating a chicken sandwich. I mean, that's just Caleb. He is grateful at all times, and he's taught me so much about life. So for the past <clears throat> nine months, actually, let me go back to September, not September, but the 27th of April, when we were told that our son had been diagnosed with stage four osteosarcoma. Uh, that's bone cancer. It is a very rare, very aggressive form 
of cancer that our son was diagnosed with. We were told three different medical facts uh, that were daunting at the time. One of them was that there was only a 27% chance of survival. We were also told that there was a 50% chance of recurrence. Additionally, we were told that our son's leg would need to be amputated. It was not, it is not, it will never be. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The other medical fact that we were told is that there was cancer in his lungs. Two days before the lung surgery that he had, we met with our oncologist. So the surgery happened on August 21st. On August 19th, we had this important meeting. It was really, really hard because I, I wanted to see what they were seeing. I was having a hard time understanding why a month after major limb surgery, my son was going to have major lung surgery. So we asked for this meeting. It was granted to us. And the doctor patiently took the time to show us scans that clearly show that there were cancerous nodules in his lungs. The day of the surgery, five minutes before the surgery, the surgeon came up to me and said, I know we've talked about a couple of nodules, but I really believe that there are more nodules there. I'm going to do my best to remove all of them. That same surgeon, two and a half hours later, came back with a look of astonishment because he found absolutely nothing in Caleb's lungs. Absolutely nothing. Who does that? God does that. Only he does that. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. That doctor looked at me and he said, I am good at what I do. I have done hundreds of these surgeries. Never before have I seen this. There's absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I thought I was having a bad day, so I invited my medical team to come and review the work that I did. After all, you don't open a child up thinking that there might be cancer. And there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing. So we thank God for that. God spoke to our hearts, and he said, Caleb needs to go to Africa with you. We're in the middle of treatment. We're toward the end of treatment. We met with our doctors. The doctors were not in favor of that. <clears throat> Initially, they were. When it came time to making the final decision, they said, we don't think it's a good idea for Caleb to go with you to Africa. After all, his immune system is compromised. His counts are a bit low. Let's wait until next year. I am so grateful to God for Children's Hospital. I am so grateful for the medical staff. I'm so grateful that I live in this city where I can access the best medical care in the world. But I'm mostly grateful for my Heavenly Father who speaks to me, who speaks to us. So he spoke to our, he spoke to our hearts and he said, you know what, Caleb needs to go. I want him to go. So we met with our doctors and we said, our son is going. <laughs> we're going to Africa. Can you please help support the decision that we're making? So Caleb and I and the rest of the family just came back from, not just, we've been back for two and a half weeks. And during that time, we got to bless 5,000 beautiful children with an amazing Christmas experience that they will never, ever forget. That's the God that we serve. That's the faithful, powerful God that you and I serve. So I want to thank you for being on this journey of faith with us. You have prayed. You have encouraged us. You know, there were plenty of times when we didn't have it, and that's why we need us. That's why we need each other. There were plenty of times when we didn't have faith, where we couldn't see the next day, but you were there. So we come back from Africa. I got to tell you this story real quick. So we come back from Africa and we go back straight into chemo, round 17 of 18. We're almost there. We go back tomorrow for the last one ever. 
<clears throat> but anyway, we come back from Africa, and uh, you know, Caleb is highly favor of God, and he is because he's always grateful. There's something for us to learn in that, to always be grateful. So we come back, we do chemo, and we get an invitation. We are told, hey, come to uh, the Chargers training camp facility, the football team uh, in town, because we, we have a surprise for you. So we show up, um, and we were blown away. You know, talk about God doing above and beyond. We show up, and, uh, and Caleb and our family, we're, we're surprised with a trip to the Super Bowl. It's like, yeah. You know, so Caleb, there he, there's Caleb right there, smiling. You know, he smiles when he's getting tickets to the Super Bowl. He smiles when he's getting chemo. He's just a grateful child. So funny part of this story is that uh, Joey Boza, who's become, he's a, the football player there, gigantic, massive guy. He's like 6'5", 300 pounds, and uh, full of God's heart and just a generous person. And so he tells Caleb, hey, Caleb, buddy, I have great news for you. Guess what? You're going to the Super Bowl. Caleb really doesn't know a whole lot about the Super Bowl, but he knows that when you get a gift, you're grateful. So he smiles, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to the Super Bowl. I'm so glad. And then he's like, wait, wait a minute. Can I ask a question? And he's like, yeah, what is it? Uh, can I take my mama instead of my dad? Can you believe he said that? <laughs> that little punk. Can't believe that, man. After all we've been through, he wants to take his mom. He's a grateful person. He really is. I have so much faith for us in 2020. I believe that God is going to do things that we never thought he would do. We are all carrying something with us. There in life, there are battles and there are blessings. You know, I recently heard a story about Pastor Rick Warren, and we all know who he is, and we love what he's done for the Christian community. So a few years ago, he authored that incredible book, The Purpose Driven Life. You guys remember that book? And at that time, that book began to sell like crazy. Like it, be it became the number one selling book. After the Bible, it was Purpose Driven Life. And do you know that at that time, his wife was diagnosed with cancer at that very same time? So in life, there are going to be battles, and there's going to be blessings as well. And we thank God for those battles. And we have to fight through those battles. And we are not alone. God is with us. He is for us. He is in us. So I want to encourage us in the name of Jesus to be on the receiving end of this gift that God wants to give to every single one of us. It's not just for me. It's not just for my family. It's not just for Caleb. It's for all of us. So can I ask us to stand up right now? Can I ask us to stand up and open our hands to God to receive the gift of faith, to receive an increase in the area of faith? Our God is able to do abundantly more than we can ask or think according to the power that's within us. Father, you are so good. You are so good. You are so faithful, Lord. In this moment, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I release a new faith in our hearts. I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And you may not be dealing with cancer, but you're dealing with some serious stuff. You are contending for serious breakthroughs in your life. So I don't know if it has to do with the house. I don't know if it has to do with finances. I don't know what it has to do with. I don't know if you're not able to sleep at night, but whatever it is, we can give it to God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give it all to you. We thank you, Father, for the battles, and we thank you for the blessings. We thank you, Father, that 2020 will truly be the year of spike. We thank you, Father, for all that you have for us. We thank you, God, that we are not alone, that you've given us a great community that we can be a part of. 
Thank you, Father. We love you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. It's all for you, Lord. It's all for you. We promise to give you all the glory in all things. All the glory in all things. All the glory in all things. God, we are so grateful. We are so grateful. As Alex was sharing that story, and as we as a community are watching Caleb defy every odd, every fact medically, he's defying it. Caleb, who last week was running through here with both his legs. <laughs> Caleb, who is so full of life. Caleb, who they can't find traces of cancer in his body. Come on. I feel like Caleb's a picture for us. Remember the story, Joshua and Caleb, right? Went into the promised land and came back with a good report. It might look impossible, but our God can do it. And I feel like it's a picture for us for what we're stepping into this year. There might be things that look impossible. There might be statements said about that area or about that arena in your life or about your health or about your finances or about your career, those things. But our God does the impossible. He's the way maker. He's the miracle worker. It's who he is. And just like Caleb, who I think is teaching us a lesson, he's remained in a place of gratitude. And it's just opened up heaven for him. Some of you guys know this story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. When we were, we just came on our four-year anniversary of taking over the church as senior pastors. And when we were praying about that, if we were to do it, honestly, we were in a hot tub in Reading. And um, <laughs> looking up at the sky and praying. And, and I'll be honest, Hona was more into it than I was, the, the whole idea of this, doing this. And I was like, God, I don't know. I need a sign. I need a sign. And I, I remember praying and asking God, God, are you going to be with, will there be grace to do this? Will there be grace for us to take this role at expression? And we heard the Lord speak to us that day, and he said, where there's gratitude, there's always grace. And we just began to thank God. Because I was like, God, I need him. I, I, before he said that, I was like, I need, I need like, signs in the sky and I literally we, we were joking and and I was like well if grace is if you know I need grace and I need a sign that there's going to be grace and so you know the number five many times represents grace and so I was like God wouldn't it be kind of funny we're joking around I'm like could you just give us like five shooting stars or something like I need something really profound to do this and when he said there's grace when there's gratitude and we just begin to thank God and we just begin to realign our heart into a position of gratitude and for 10 minutes, we're just sitting in this hot tub, just thanking God. Thank, we had a hard year, but just thanking God for what he'd done. And I kid you not, it's why we're here today. Because in those 10 minutes as we're thanking God, we sat there dumbfounded as five huge shooting stars shot across the sky. So then we had to do it, right? And I feel like Caleb is a picture of that for us. We're going to defy the impossibilities. We're going into our promised land. But it's key to remember that the grace comes with the gratitude. And so we posture our heart this year in gratitude. We posture our heart to focus on what God is doing. We don't deny the fact that we've had hard things last year. But we focus on what God is doing. And we can just continue to stay in a place of worship and gratitude. Amen? Amen. Bless you guys. Please go get your children. Bless our children's workers who've been back there a long time. If you need prayer, we'll have our team down here. Have an amazing week.